today, the engineering unit we're going to do has to do with bioengineering. Bio, and I think we've actually heard that word before, bio. Who remembers that word? Maybe I think from last week, Malik. Like life? Good. Bio means life, okay? So today, the unit that we're going to be working on has to do with bioengineering. Who remembers what an engineer does? They, like, make your life easier and better, like a microwave. Okay, they make life easier and better by maybe a microwave. Joshua? They invent some things. They invent some things. They improve. They improve. So you have engineers are people that what? They use their knowledge, they use their resources to help create and make life easier. And you know that for every engineering unit that we do, there's a story. If you've heard of Salvador, show me in. Okay. Does anyone know anyone from El Salvador? Huh, okay. Does anyone know anything about El Salvador? How, what type of, let's say, climate does El Salvador have? Remember? Humid. Good, it's humid. Warm. Warm. So it's humid and warm, very tropical. We're going to talk about Juan Daniel, his frog, the problem, okay, and how a bioengineer is going to help Juan Daniel solve his problem. Pay attention to new vocabulary that you might be hearing because we're going to stop in the middle and we're going to work on vocabulary words, but also look into a little bit more about what we're actually going to be doing this week. So, chapter one, game day. Juan Daniel tossed a water bottle into his duffel bag and scanned the rest of his contents. Gonzalez t-shirt, check. Towel, kick, halfway across the field. Juan Daniel jogged out to him and started warming up. I want to stop for a second. What was the problem with the soccer field? And I want you in your group to discuss what was the problem of the soccer field. Okay, think of what El Salvador was like, what they finished saying, you know, how, what the climate was. But what was the problem with where the soccer field was? I think the problem with the soccer field was that it would not be hot or like dry. I think, it was, I think the problem with the soccer field is that it's actually hot because there were not just the block to be in the sun. Let me see, what was the problem? Who would like to share from their group? Ziari. The soccer field would not like be hot and dry. It would be hot and dry. Why do you think that would be a problem? Why would having a soccer field so hot and dry? Remember, there was something else that they didn't, they didn't have, Geraldi. It, they would get like tired easier since there was no like shadow where they could like be under. Okay, so they would get tired easier because there was no shadow, there was no shade. It hadn't rained for months. So that tells you it was already dry, it was hot. So imagine what it would be like to play in a soccer field where it was dry and hot and nothing to shade us. Okay, so we're gonna continue. Hey, nice t-shirt, is it new? Carlos, please. chapter three, a football frog. And now we're talking about football, like, you know, NFL. NFL? No. no, what kind of football are we talking about? Soccer. Soccer, Soccer. very good. I want to make sure we see that difference. So a football Juan frog. Daniel. I Juan think Daniel. everyone, including the frog, should go back to my grandmother's pupuseria. We need some victory food. In the rainforest, trees are cut down. What do you think happens to those animals? They have no to live in their the wrong place. Like they don't have like no place to live so they go to like another habitat. They have no home but they have no home they can have no one to go. They have no food to survive. So anyone sitting where Matthew's sitting, can you stand up? Okay. So what happens to the animals? Matthew. Uh, they have to um, like, they have to live the habitat and and move and find another place where they could live. Okay, so they have to leave their habitat and find another place where they could live. The family of animals, like their babies, they probably like lose their parents and stuff. Okay, so you might have animals that lose their parents. We all came up with some good points. The idea is you guys could take a seat, you guys did a nice job. They could go someplace where they're not supposed to, maybe eat something they're not supposed to and die, but the main thing you guys came up with, give me a second, Matthew, is that they will not survive. Okay, there's a problem with them surviving. What was the difference, what difference did Juan Daniel notice with the frog that he found and the other frogs that, you found, that he saw in the rainforest? There was something that he mentioned about the way this frog looked compared to how the other frogs he normally sees looked. The frog was not like, it didn't have no like touch to it. It didn't feel like wet or nothing. It just felt like dried as, Paper? Yes, it was dry. 
Okay, it was dry, it felt like paper. Okay, so now we're gonna look at chapter four, because after this, we're gonna stop and we're gonna review some new vocabulary, and we're going to talk about why that frog being dry was something that we need to look at. Okay, so we have chapter four, a helpful visit. If you have a few minutes, you might be interested to hear about some of the work that I do. I bet it would help you come up with a way to help your frog. So really quick, who did Juan Daniel meet? Jaldi? He met engineers. He met engineers, very good. Now, Juan Daniel looked hopefully at Ma Mama Tere. Well, I can't have that frog sitting in the pupuseria forever, can I? Mama Tere asked. Okay. Like Go ahead and sit skin? and figure out what it to do with it. It could stop people from getting what? sick or even help us come up with new medicines or vaccines. In your group, what was special about the frog skin? And I'll give you a clue. It was a membrane, but what was special about the membrane? Okay, so what was so special about the frog skin? Alexis. It absorbs water from the skin. It absorbs water from the skin? Okay, so it lets certain things in like water and it lets certain things out like diseases. Okay, so it helps them breathe. It protects them and helps them absorb the air through their body because that's how they breathe. Nice. What's special about their skin is, if you notice in the picture, it allows certain things water. in. They need air and water in, but it won't allow the, earth, the dirt to come in. So that's what we're going to be looking at. I'm going to finish this chapter, and then we're going to work on what our membranes. Okay, how are they similar to that of the human membrane? Okay, so we're on Juan Daniel. I have an idea that might get you started, said Miss Peters. You could try taking a walk outside. Sometimes nature has already solved the problem in a unique way. When bio, when bio engineers look at how nature works, we can get some great information that helps us create technologies, things or processes that help us like solve problems. Skin, he thought, so and who knew they traveled to places like my little town in El Salvador. Okay, so we're gonna stop right here. Let's go back really quick. What was Juan Daniel's problem? And I will give you a clue. The engineers and Miss Pe Miss and the scientists and Miss Peters and bioengineer helped him kind of un understand the problem. Geraldi. He had to figure out, like, he had to figure out something so the frog can stay moisturized, like when he's during a game, like playing in the game, because if like the frog is not moisturized, that can actually harm the frog. Okay, so we have if the frog is moisturized, it could harm the frog. It could dry out. So he needs to make sure he had to do something, create something where the frog stayed moisture while he was also playing. Okay, but before we get into the idea of what he can do, we're going to go a little bit into about cell membranes and we're going to look at what membranes are, what can they do, how we can connect them. Now, I want you to use a little bit of what you learned in the story with Juan Daniel, what Miss Peter spoke about with the idea of membranes and what they do. So, I'm gonna give you six minutes and I want this to be independent. You're not working with a group yet. Begin. Okay, so what do we do to get water? How do we get water into our system? Okay, and how does a frog get water? Okay. We've been talking about that. I want you to look up here. That's why I put this picture up. What is a membrane? Geraldi. Something that protects the frogs and like also it lets certain things in like water and air, but it doesn't let like harmful things in like dirt. Okay, good. So is it only found on frogs though? Because I know as I was walking around, I saw a lot of you write, you know, it's on the frog. Where else can, you know, so it could be something that allows <coughs> helpful things in and harmful things out and it, and it blocks. Can you name a membrane that is part of your body? Skin. Skin, yes, skin. Now the question is, and I know it might not be on here, but and I think I asked this group over here. The, our skin allows certain things out and allows certain things in. What is something that our skin allows maybe in? Air. Air, it allows air in. Now what's something that it allows out that's also very important for us? Malik? Water. It allows water in the form of what? Sweat. Sweat. 
okay? Because our bodies would overheat, that is a function of our skin. Okay, our skin, very similar, may not be exactly the same as a frog, but it has the same job. It allows certain things in and allows certain things out. Number four, how do humans meet their needs, their basic need for water? Dante? We drink it and it gets what into our bodies? And I'm looking for a certain word and I want you guys getting used to using this word. It, it's liquid. There's a word. It begins with an A. Acid. Not acid. No. Absorbs. Okay, remember how a frog skin, it absorbs the air and water through their skin? Well, our stomachs absorb the water and it pretty much um, brings it to wherever parts of our body needs it. Now, I just gave you the answer to number five. How do frogs meet their basic need for water? Absorbing. Very good. They absorb it through their what? Skin. skin. Remember that. They absorb it through their skin. Okay, okay so yesterday we were introduced to Juan Daniel. Miss Peters had given Juan Daniel an idea and a time frame. So now he was going to go visit the rainforest. Now we're going to see what's going to happen. This is where we're going to learn what our challenge is going to be today. Okay, so a trip to the rainforest. Before the sun sank below the horizon, Juan Daniel walked over to the edge of the forest in his town that led to an imposible. He was imagining his poor frog sitting underneath the waterfall. I don't think he'd stand a chance being hit with all that water, Juan Daniel thought. Why do you think he said he can't imagine his frog being able to withstand all that water falling on him? I'm Joshua. They only took a little bit of water, but they usually take a lot. Frogs usually take a little bit of water, they don't take a lot? Like the, like the waterfall? It's like the pressure of the waterfall can like hurt, hurt the frogs to like the body. Okay, so maybe the pressure might be too hard, it might get too much water, it needs steady and calm water to live in. Okay. He saw the trees and bushes at the base of the waterfall and thought of what Miss Peters had said about the frogs hiding themselves and hiding themselves inside leaves in his hand. That's it, Juan Daniel realized. I need to make something that will drip just enough water onto the frog to keep him moist. Now, I need to figure out how to design it. My name is Marlena Villas. I teach at Reverend Dr. Ursel F. Webb Elementary, PS22 in Jersey City, and I teach fifth grade. We are in an urban school district, so a lot of our students um, either receive reduced or free lunch. My fifth grade classroom is the fifth grade inclusion classroom for the school, meaning that we have, I want to say, four or five students with special needs that although they do have the special needs, once their work is accommodated and modified, they could work pretty much with the rest of the classroom. Ms. Ms. Ortiz and I are co-teachers. Um, I'm a general education teacher. She is the inclusion teacher. As part of my role um, in the classroom is that I'm a special ed teacher. So I come in, I'm, I'm in the classroom all day. I provide modifications and accommodations for special ed students in order to be successful in a general education setting. Um, I was introduced to the EIE units, I want to say close to five or six years ago. I like that they do have the language arts components that they want us to cover. In the units, they have A and B. So as a accommodations, we give the class as a whole B, because the B is an easier read and easier for the kids to understand, so it helps everyone out. They're not, they feel successful, they feel like they can read the, read the material that's, that's handed in front of them. Why is it important to teach the first lesson in the unit is because each lesson in the unit builds on the lesson before. So lesson one starts to build on lesson two, and then two starts reflecting on one so that it keeps on building. I think the students really enjoy the story because it gets them understanding what's what's happening next. Like I like to let them know this is what we're going to be doing and knowing expectations kind of helps keeps the class organized, keeps them focused, they know what to look forward to.